Hey everyone, this is Cam Frequency and Apple's WWDC 2022 recently passed and they announced a bunch of new features and some hardware and software upgrades that is coming between next month and this fall. We got two new MacBooks in the Air and Pro, including the new M2 chip installed on both. The Air got a nice redesign and the MacBook Pro got some great upgrades. What I want to talk about here though is the new iPad features that are being released with iPad OS 16. All of them are some great additions to the iPad, but I have some thoughts on Stage Manager, one of the most important announcements because it's the first time we have proper multitasking on the iPad, and I'm going to spend a little longer on that one. We'll briefly discuss some of the other changes coming to iPad OS 16 too, so let's get into it. Home has a redesigned interface on the iPad, giving it a more grid-like view of all the devices you have in your home, from cameras to the thermostat. The redesign gives you a better look at what is going on with those devices at any time without tapping the device like before. It's much more clean and organized, and this will get some use for me in the future because device management on Android is a bit of a mess when trying to use Google Home. You can change the background too to match whatever aesthetic you choose for each individual room and their devices. There's also getting support for more devices in the future and around the time of release for iOS and iPadOS 16. Moving on, we have another feature that Apple is adding to iPadOS to sort of bridge the gap between it and macOS. With this feature, they are trying to add toolbars and shortcuts for the commonly used or your own most frequent actions in specific apps. They will be completely customizable to whichever shortcuts you want on the toolbar. This will ensure that you don't need to spend time looking for them in the drop menus. Things like search and replace and renaming files through the file manager got a bit easier. I like that they're attempting to bridge the gap between laptop and tablet for people who want to buy an iPad as their primary device. Most of these features are going to go hand in hand with the main star of iPad OS 16, Stage Manager, in hopes of making it easier to get proper productivity on the iPad. So let's talk about Stage Manager, the most significant addition to iPad OS 16, which was announced with good reason. Looking at the iPad, many people have been clamoring to have iPad OS be more akin to Mac OS or just have the ability to have Mac OS installable in general. Apple doesn't seem like they're entertaining the idea at all, but that still hasn't stopped Apple from trying to kind of sort of bridge the gap between iPad OS and Mac OS. You can have multiple apps open that are pinned to the left side of the screen, and by tapping them, you can switch between them. In addition, they also give you the ability to add multiple windows and resize them. You now have full external display support, so you can use an external display for your iPad. You can move these windows to the external display to have more space to work with when you need it. It seems like an excellent addition to the iPad to finally have some great multitasking. I do have some thoughts on it though, bear with me. Apple's design philosophy has always been centered around ease of use. Their goal is to always make products and features easy to understand for the average consumer. It's a good philosophy to have. It's the reason Apple products are so beloved by an enormous amount of people. Take the lock screen on iOS 16 and its new customization features. This type of customization has existed on Android devices in some capacity, but what Apple did was take a feature that takes some steps to accomplish on Android devices and make it more simple to change, realigning with that philosophy. The only problem is that there are times when that design process makes things more complicated. That is what Stage Manager is in my opinion. Apple decided to make a solution to an already solved problem. Generating windows has existed for years and I can't fathom why Apple wouldn't just choose to do the same as everyone else. With Stage Manager, you have less screen real estate and the windows can only be resized from left to right unless you have an external display, in which case you would have more space. The only problem is that some people have only an iPad and that screen is just not enough for what Apple is trying to accomplish here. On the 11 inch iPad, it just feels clunky and the space being used for the entire feature takes up too much of the screen. It would seem like it would work better on the 12.9 inch, but it would still benefit from eliminating the tilted windows to switch between apps and allowing the dock to auto hide like they allow it to already. I think all these animations and transitions aren't what's needed for multitasking. I believe individuals who want to multitask just want separate resizable windows to move around as they see fit instead of being put on rails. You also shouldn't need to buy a separate display to take full advantage. When you decide not to use an extended display, what you get is basically a loss of almost about 2 inches from the display, making an already packed tight 11 inch display even tighter. Nevertheless, I think it's a start, and it's an interesting and odd way of creating windows on a tablet without just making it like Mac OS. A feature that's also being shared between iOS and iPadOS is the ability to access live text for already created video. When you pause a video on any particular frame, you can scan that text and instantly copy and paste to wherever you want, including looking up definitions and starting up a search from anywhere. In addition, you can use your camera to scan text and do the same, including making phone calls and making conversions on the fly without having to copy and paste to Google. If you need to translate any languages, you can do it without having to leave the app at all. It also does a pretty good job of translating too. Longer translations though may be a tad bit harder. On pictures, you can isolate anything from its background and bring it to the forefront of an image to give a photo more focus on a particular object. These are some great additions to iPadOS that I'm glad are finally being added for some more convenience. 
If you own the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, you can now use it as a reference display for video and photo editing, which is pretty awesome. Getting a good reference color without having to buy an actual reference monitor could come in handy if you already own an iPad. However, I wouldn't exactly go out and rush to buy a 12.9 inch iPad to access this one feature. You can think of it though as a great added bonus that gives the iPad Pro another good reason to keep ownership of one and if you were already leaning toward the bigger iPad Pro in general. Besides that, you can now display scale, changing the screen's resolution allowing you to fit more on the screen. But again, the features I talked about can only be used on the 12.9 inch because of its larger screen and the mini LED display. For the first time on an iPad, we get a new virtual RAM feature. The ability to add extra memory in exchange for storage space is something that existed on Android devices like Samsung in the form of RAM Plus. It's great that Apple is adding it now so iPad users can take advantage. What it allows the iPad to do is when memory on the iPad begins to run low, it'll kick over to that virtual RAM in the form of that reserved storage space, making multitasking features like Stage Manager run more efficient and allowing more demanding apps to use more memory. The iPad Pro already has great general performance, but it always helps to have that extra boost when you need it. And last but not least, messages. Just like on iOS, you can now edit and delete messages, which are also one of the better things announced for iPad OS and iOS 16. On sending a message and editing them right in the chat is fantastic. Another feature is being able to mark messages as unread. So if you're not ready to answer just yet, you won't feel like you're just completely ignoring it. I imagine some people are going to love that one. I like that they are making changes like these. Sometimes the small things make the difference, even if most of it hasn't changed that much. You just have to hope that the people you're sending a message to will eventually have iOS 16, because generally, if they don't, this feature won't work at all, which can end up with some awkward conversations if you aren't careful. Overall, all the features of iPadOS 16 are decent additions like Stage Manager, even though I thought that it's an odd implementation for multitasking. It's still a start for creating better productivity on the iPad, and it shows that Apple is generally listening to consumers voicing to have better multitasking in general. Lock screen features being added to iOS are not ready for the iPad, but I'm sure they will be with time. The virtual RAM is also a good addition. And I also forgot about Freeform, which seems like it'll get a lot of uses from many people doing considerable projects in the future. However, I don't think any of these features have convinced anyone to run out and get an iPad. They partially haven't been proposed as such either. Many of these features seem like they were created for people already invested in the Apple ecosystem. I believe that if you already own one, you have some attractive features to look forward to, even if they aren't the most exciting. For those that are still on the fence on picking up an iPad, I don't think the status quo changed too much as of now. I almost forgot. Weather. Now if we only had that calculator to make the iPad complete. If you like this video, give it a like, comment, and think about subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video.